Republican asked me, Mr. Falcone, show us the money, okay? You know, in order to buy a building for $2.1 million, you need about $475,000 in, in cash. I had 10 grand in the bank. I had a large portfolio of real estate, but I didn't have any cash. I wasn't liquid. Well, they signed the agreement of sale. I couldn't believe it. I ran home that evening, and I put eight buildings up for sale immediately. And I am a licensed real estate agent. I, uh, I, I uh, primarily use it for my own properties. And I got lucky because in 2005, you know, where I lived, the market was still hot. And I was able to close a deal on four properties relatively quickly that uh, happened to be some of the first buildings I bought. So each one had about ballpark about a hundred grand in equity in it. So right away I needed 475,000 and I picked up 400 real fast from the sale of these four properties. Now I hadn't closed on them yet, but I got agreements of sale, strong agreements of sale on four buildings. Well, if, if any of you have ever bought a piece of real estate with a tenant in it, you know that when you buy a piece of real estate with a tenant in it, you get at settlement the last month's rent and the security deposit, right? Well, this building had a rent roll of $40,000 a month. So the last month's rent and the security deposit was like $60,000. So I used, I called up the title company and I said, can I use that $60,000? Can it be transferred to my side of the sheet at settlement? Yes, it can. Great. So I had ten grand. I had to raise five more. And I basically bought a $2.1 million building for $15,000. Ooh, Pretty good, good deal. Good job. I mean, now, I really, obviously, I paid 400 for it. But another way to think about it is, I mean, I didn't sell those buildings. I didn't lose the money I had in those buildings. The way I like to think about it is that the money, the equity or the money that I had in those four buildings I sold, all I really did was they changed addresses. They changed from 123 Oak Lane to now Executech Suites. So... I kind of love doing this stuff. It's, it's like playing Monopoly, where I'm taking green houses mm. and I'm turning them four green houses, right? You trade it in, you get a red hotel. Uh, that's why I love this business. You make a deal like that, it's, it feels tremendous. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about the state of commercial. I, I bought a lot of commercial property in my day. I've even bought some here in Reading. I had under contract uh, 125 South 5th Street back in um, 2003, 2002, something like that. Uh, it was a four-story uh, office building, 10,000 square feet on each floor, like 40,000 square feet plus another 10 in the basement. I had it under contract, uh, I think for 300 grand, and then I backed out of the deal uh, right before settlement. I actually write about it in my book. There's a whole chapter dedicated to that deal. One of the things I do with my book is I take the real estate deals that I've done and I don't talk about all of them. I talk about the ones that have something that's worth sharing, different kinds of things that I've done. And I write about them in detail so that the reader can almost be like living through the whole experience with me and, and hopefully gaining the knowledge that I gained without having to risk your neck like I did. So... Um, what, what have they been saying about commercial real estate over the last couple of years? Oh, it's, uh, it's going to collapse. It's, gonna, it's coming down with uh, residential. You know, I don't really worry too much about that because one of the reasons that I want to take my residential buildings and roll them into commercial is when the markets go bad in a residential arena, what happens? Value of your property goes down with the with the value of your neighbors. And no matter how nice your property is, there's not much you can do about it. The comps in your neighborhood, if your neighbors are panicking and they're selling their houses at significant discounts, mm -hmm. your building value is going with it, okay? But in the commercial arena, that is not necessarily true. Commercial buildings are, are valued on comps to a certain extent, but at a much, much lower percentage. And it's the... What really comes down to what the building is worth is how much money it makes. And if you are the kind of person who has a lot of energy and you're a great landlord and you can do marketing and you can do sales and you take care of the people in your building, you're going to do better than anybody else.
okay? And I don't do anything except take care of my real estate. So I like to think that I'm the best at what I do in my neck of the woods. This building I have with 47 offices, right now I got three vacancies. All around me are empty buildings. But uh, a lot of these people, you know, what do they do for a living? Maybe they're a dentist who bought a piece of real estate as a part-time gig. I mean, I wake up every day thinking of ways to fill that building. So I just don't see how uh, those kind of guys are going to beat me, okay? They're not addicted to real estate. I'm addicted to real estate. I'm the guy who's going to fill that building. So what I'm doing today is I'm avoiding the commercial arena just because I think it's dangerous, especially since my favorite sector is office buildings. A lot of people are going after apartment buildings today. And if you look at the, I don't know what the cap rates are going for in Reading, but if you look at them in the Philadelphia area, the cap rates are really getting low. They're down to like 6%. And to me, it's, that's where they were in 2005. So there's so many people putting money into apartment buildings today. I, I'm staying away from that sector simply because the deals aren't good. My favorite sector is office buildings, but office buildings, I like the kind of office buildings that cater to small businesses. And small businesses right now are suffering in this economy. So to me, I don't think that the timing is exactly right just now to be acquiring commercial buildings. So I'm avoiding it, but I'm getting ready to start jumping on it soon. So how did I learn about commercial real estate? What I like to tell people, I call the signs. They go, what signs? What do you mean signs? The signs. You live here, you work there. There's commercial buildings in between where you drive every day with big giant signs out front. Call the signs. I used to drive my wife crazy for years. I call the signs of these buildings that are $5 million buildings. But, and I just go in and say, I want to talk to the owner. I want to learn about your building. And a funny thing happened. I mean, I started to learn how to negotiate with people about what their buildings were worth. I started to learn what kind of questions to ask them to figure out what the deals were all about. And you can't learn this stuff in college. You can't go to Harvard and learn how to buy commercial buildings, right? Nobody there, none of those professors there buy commercial buildings. The only way to learn it is in School of Hard Knocks. It's from calling the signs. So um, that's what I love to do. I'm very, I'm always involved in looking at commercial buildings. I'm not buying any office buildings right now, but I'm getting ready to. And when the economy starts to show signs that things are going to change, uh, then I'm going to jump all over it. So uh, this is my website. Uh, I have a web TV show. I don't know if, uh, if any of you have ever checked out a web TV show. It's called Addicted to Real Estate TV. And all you have to do to get it is go to my website and uh, right up in the top here above the video you put your name and email address in and it's free and I make videos about a little 10 minute videos about all the things I'm doing in real estate it's like a little TV show and it comes to you free each week and I have a heck of a lot of fun doing it and if you want to pick up some great uh, free information on real estate uh, make sure you sign up for it we'll have a lot of fun with it I'll show you some of the videos I made this one's called the, uh, the Real Estate State of the Union. I had to go down to Washington, D.C. and straighten those guys out about the real estate market. Okay? So uh, you can see, see me there with a couple of uh, big wigs behind me. And uh, you can hear me uh, lambasting the, the, the guys in D.C. This is another video I made with these two young guys. This was like uh, Donald Trump's show, The Apprentice. These two young guys were always saying, Phil, help me do this in real estate. Help me do that. I said, I, I kept on giving them advice, but they kept showing up at meetings every month asking me the same questions. I said, finally, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have the Apprentice TV show. I'm going to put you knuckleheads on video. And then I gave them assignments to do, and we're waiting now for them to come back. We're going to find out. So if you hurry up and sign up for my web TV show, you'll get to find out what happens to these two young, uh, these two young guys. You get to find out if they're going to be pretenders or if they're going to be uh, contenders. Uh, also, if you sign up for my free web TV show, I give out a lot of free forms. This is a form I use to evaluate properties. If I get somebody on the phone, I'm talking to them about properties, about the property that they have for sale. This form reminds me to ask certain questions 
and I use the same form each time I talk to somebody. The reason I do that is it really helps me when I'm trying, when I have 15 deals that I'm working on, it helps me to evaluate them easily and pick the one that's the best deal. Uh, this is a chart that I also give away for free if you sign up for my web TV show. This is what I call the equity tracking chart. And this is a chart that I uh, developed. It's, uh, it's an Excel chart with uh, all the math formulas worked out for you. So what you do is when your mortgage statement comes in each month, you go in and put the amount of money that's owed on the mortgage and how much is going to principal. And it gives you spaces to fill in information about everything. And the chart automatically calculates how much principal you're accruing in your portfolio each month, how much money you owe, what the net worth of your buildings are. Reason this is important, and the reason I started it is because I started to suspect 15 years ago that I shouldn't trust mortgage companies to keep track of how much money I owe them on any of my properties. So by having this chart, I'm forced every month when the statement comes in, first thing I do is I enter it in QuickBooks. The second thing I do is I take it to my equity tracking chart. I make sure my principal's going up. I make sure the amount of money I owe on that building is going down. And I make sure that uh, my payments each month are being accurately recorded. And I mean, geez, I didn't know 15 years ago about all the stuff going on with MERS and things like that. But we all know now how mortgage companies have screwed up everything, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Come on, I feel like I'm talking to a painting. <laughs> Come on. Don, what are you hiding in the corner for? It's as quiet as you've ever been. <laughs>